When was the last time you wept in prayer? I mean, really wept tears of anguish. Prayers that are so full of repentance that you weep for your sins. Have you ever cried because your sins were the very things Jesus himself wept for the night before his crucifixion? Such prayers are the result of a broken spirit and a contrite heart. They are the prayers our almighty God truly hears and responds to with his great compassion and mercy. It is only through his mercy that we can be refined and used as tools for his will to be accomplished. How many of you have cried for the return of Christ? Do you feel the power of the Holy Spirit when you read the last words in the Bible? Revelation 22 verse 20 He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I hear and see so many people focusing on the times we are in now and how bad they are getting. People even pray that these things stopped, but little do they realise that these events are biblical prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. We should be rejoicing that our eyes and ears are opened and we are children of God witnessing the lead up to the return of Jesus Christ. When looked at from the proper perspective given to us through the Holy Spirit, we should be praying for God's holy fire to inspire us to speak boldly according to his will so that others may see his glory through his will being fulfilled through us. We should be praising and thanking God that we are witnesses to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are living witnesses for the very creator of everything. Start acting like it. Put your faith into action and seek God's will for you, not your own will with Jesus thrown in as an afterthought. So many people wonder why their prayers of hindrance are not answered when they are praying for the slowing down of the return of Christ. What are they thinking? It is about time people woke up from the deception surrounding them and started weeping for the salvation of the lost souls headed for the pits of hell. Wake up and start praying for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you so you can speak boldly for Christ, even to the point of your own persecution. And if you are persecuted, rejoice in the knowledge that Jesus Christ suffered the ultimate persecution for your salvation first. The last thing this world needs is more wimpy, mamby-pamby, lukewarm Christians doing nothing for the salvation of others. All the world sees through the fruits of the Laodicean age we are in is hypocrisy. This church is going to be vomited from the mouth of Christ. In other words, they make him sick. Wake up and get real. Seek the one true Jesus Christ, not some abomination named Jesus that has infiltrated so-called believers to the point of powerlessness. Get to it. Give God praise and thanks for his great mercy and saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ and seek the power of the Holy Spirit to be upon you so that you may become less and Christ become more for his glory. John chapter 3, verse 30 to 36. He must become greater, I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The man who has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on him.